All right, ladies and gentlemen. The question is: Saturn dasha or sare sati always bad? Is it good or bad? Or how is it? Is it stereotype that certain ascendants or certain moon signs uh, they will always have a bad sare sati or Saturn dasha or somebody like Capricorn, Aquarius, or Libra or um, Taurus, they will always have a good Sare Sati or a good Saturn Dasha. So there is no stereotype like this that uh, for certain moon signs or ascendants, Saturn Dasha or Sare Sati will always be good or bad. So if you are hearing all this in YouTube that, so for example, currently Saturn is in Capricorn. So uh, I have seen many people with uh, Aquarius moon sign you know, contacting me and asking that, oh, Saturn uh, has entered the 12th sign from my moon. So my Sade Sati has started. So will I see hell for the next seven and a half years? Well, definitely you won't see necessarily. So let's understand two things. The first thing is... Uh, when you say is Saturn Dasha going to be good or bad, what do you mean by good or bad? Because there are people who don't like to do anything in life. They just want to uh, sit in couch and just uh, just watch Netflix all day uh, and uh, just waste their life, ruin their life. Even materially, what to speak of spiritually, even materially they are ruining their lives uh, by... Uh, behaving like this so for them yeah it is going to be like hell it will be worse than hell for them if somebody is behaving like this then uh, you will see worst of the worst hellish uh, situations in life but now suppose somebody is lazy but uh, wants to do good in life but is not doing <laughs> understand uh, they are lazy but they want to do good but they're not having the energy to do they just want there's a difference between wanting something and uh, putting the effort for that so for them also sare sati is difficult but what happens for them they start doing because actually they don't start they are forced to start actually they are forced to start acting on their desires the good ones actually then there is the other category who who is not lazy who wants to uh, do good but uh, takes action but uh, doesn't cross the comfort zone this is like the third category yeah they will sometimes go out of the comfort zone but uh, primarily they like the comfort zone but they are not lazy they are ready to work hard and they work hard sometimes so for these people uh, Sade Sati or Saturn Dasha these periods are very good because then they are kicked out of their comfort zone and uh, the work which they were doing already now they can do it more actually so then for them this is a fantastic period and now then we have the last category who are never wanting to stay in their comfort zone are very much uh, geared up to fulfill their desires or become better individuals. I don't mean external desires like becoming a millionaire or a billionaire but uh, wanting to become a, a better human being day in day out every moment who who are working I, I, I would say uh, people who are uh, strictly doing spiritual practices uh, in the morning I would place them in this category because it requires a lot of strength and discipline you know to do it every day morning so uh, for these people uh, even though they may face a lot of challenges in Sade Sati I like last year I was in Italy I had gone for a very big uh, spiritual gathering there so there many people had come actually many people from different spiritual communities all over europe actually uh, people linked with ashtang yoga with bhakti yoga with you know all sorts of things from different religions from christianity they had come from judaism they had come you know so i had talked to so many people there and uh, i had uh, seen so many horoscopes there you know when having lunch or while having dinner or while having breakfast you know i was eating with one hand and i was with my mobile looking at horoscopes 
because i only told them that uh, please show me your horoscopes uh, i want to see what is there uh, which time period did you start practicing what you did and i had seen almost uh, every ascendant like not every i would say at least uh, maybe eight or nine maybe 10 ascendants except uh, two or three ascendants i think i have seen every ascendant and moon sign so <coughs> and uh, universally they gave me one answer that uh, the journey during saturn antardasha or mahadasha or uh, even sadesati was very tough right but they said the end result was very good they they became much more spiritual they became much more uh, aware they became much more uh, realistic about this material world because uh saturn teaches you the bhagavad gita in a hard way krishna says in the gita that dukhala mashashvatam this world is a place of misery this material world so <coughs> krishna urges arjuna and all the other conditioned souls like you and me that we do not try to indulge more than what is necessary in this material realm because if we do that the only thing we get is suffering <laughs> yes it comes for free have you ever wanted suffering pain misery sorrow never right never 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 but it came for free and it's such a friend uh, that even if you don't want that friend comes and embraces you so and therefore it is said that one who uh, endeavors for more than what is necessary only ends up getting suffering at the end or if you try to uh, if you if you cannot make peace with your karma actually okay so why do i say this let me give you an example so there was one lady once uh, in youtube uh, recently she had uh, written a comment that um, she thinks that she is not very good looking and that is why she is uh, not able to find somebody to get married and uh, most of her female friends they look very good according to her now who looks good up at that secondary but this is somehow there inside her head you know that oh i don't look good so men are not interested in me neither they want to date me nor if i go through arranged marriage they don't want to even see my photo they don't they directly dismiss me and she had also registered in different dating apps but hard luck now according to her that is happening because uh, she thinks she doesn't look good so then she had asked me later on that um, should she go for some you know plastic surgery or something like this i said see whatever is there in your karma you should accept it what is there in your hands that you eat the right food you sleep on time you meet right people by that naturally you will look uh, nice you will look decent okay which means whatever is there in your karma you, you will be functioning at an optimum optimum level according to that okay but if you are eating all the crap and you are putting lot of makeup for after some time then your your physical appearance won't look that good and uh, you, if your lifestyle is not good then you will become old much faster it's like you are dying earlier actually old age is like death only so if somebody is becoming more and more old day by day it's like saying that um, i mean everybody gets old but if the person is rapidly uh, losing the physical um, glow in the body then it means that death is approaching uh, faster and faster actually that happens because of a terrible lifestyle so i told her that you should have a good lifestyle uh, eat vegetarian food give up eating meat and uh, sleep on time uh, don't waste time uh, by drinking or wasting time with all this tv netflix you know do some uh, exercise in the morning do some yoga in the morning do some uh, breathing exercises by which your uh, nervous system is balanced and and this is what you can do this is an effort from your side which you can put uh, for your appearance but uh, even after doing all this you may not look like an uh, some you know like some miss universe or miss world or somebody like this 
why because that is not there in your karma so now if you artificially try to pretend and you know do all this plastic surgery or whatever it is some nonsense then you will end up being more miserable this is how karma acts if you try to force karma then uh, sometimes you are successful in doing that but then what happens there is a truckload of other problems which come you know imagine if this lady would have gone for some plastic surgery or something like this then after some years anyways that beauty would have gone away so imagine how then this lady would have felt that mm, till yesterday everybody was running behind me but now nobody even wants to look at my face even after i spent so much money so and this is known as atyahar atya atyahara prayashascha which means uh, trying to do things which are not there in your karma all right so it's like duryodhan's example the throne was never his but he tried to force it and then he suffered the worst death anybody could have suffered you know bhima broke his thighs and his hip and he just ripped him apart imagine the violent death which he had so uh anybody who is trying to force karma by doing things like sometimes people tell me you know sir i want to be a, be a millionaire before the age of 30 i said okay so by 30 you are a millionaire then by 40 you are a billionaire then by 50 you are a trillionaire but what do you do after that what about 60 you know zillionaire <laughs> then what about 70 hmm imagine you become a millionaire at 60 and you die by 65 okay not a big deal but imagine you are a trillionaire by 60 you know, 40 billion uh, by 40 you are a millionaire 50 you are a billionaire 60 you are a trillionaire and then you die at 65 my god what a, how will you be able to handle it? death so the thing is uh, long story in short if you try to force karma try to do things which you also know that your destiny does not permit then your sade sati or your satan dasha is going to be the worst phase of your life it will be so bad that in the next thousand lifetimes you won't be able to forget it but if you realize that everybody has certain limitations you cannot look good beyond a certain extent you cannot become intelligent beyond a certain extent all right and within that you change your lifestyle and you have healthy habits by which you can make the best use of a bad bargain as my guru used to say na make the best use of a bad bargain so sometimes you will see people who are good looking they are not intelligent people who are intelligent but they are not good looking but they don't have money sometimes some people have a lot of money but they have a lot of health problems okay so in this material world some problem or the other will always be there either you will be unhappy with your looks or with your finances or with your married life or with your anything <laughs> with your father maybe with your mother i get people who are frustrated with their sex life you know oh, I, i i i i don't get sexual intimacy anymore should i change my partner you know so this this is like uh, this is another example you know? so it's like something is there in your account but uh, you, you are not ready to accept that so you think by changing the object uh, the ob- not the object the instrument of your karma your karma will change it doesn't happen like this all right so uh, do whatever is required have a good lifestyle have good habits and after that whatever is coming to you accept it either it is good or bad all right try your best and leave the rest to god only then your saturn dasha or sade sati or whatever any transit of saturn ashtam shani or you know kantak shani whatever they call it that will be good and include some spiritual practices just being a good animal is not enough yes sometimes people say oh i am a good person you know why do i need to become spiritual but a good person means uh, a good animal basically so if you are just being good and doing the activities of animals then there is no difference between you and an animal you are uh, the word scripture says dwipada pashu so be good be a good animal but also be a good human being so human being means one who does spiritual practices whichever religion you belong to you must do the religious practices all right now you may be a hindu you may not uh, be connect Uh, you may not feel connected with hinduism you may feel connected with christianity 
so you can do practices of christianity you may be a muslim but you i mean you may be born in a muslim family but you may like the buddhist tradition more so this is not a sectarian religious uh, belief all right so whichever tradition attracts you every authorized religion is uh at, at least these religions you know hinduism then you have islam then christianity then you have buddhism they are all authorized bona fide paths to obtain perfection okay so therefore whichever tradition inspires you please go towards that tradition even if it means changing the name in your passport it doesn't matter you know? all these things are superficial so that is something which you should do or if you are inspired by your own uh, family traditions uh, your own path you are born in a hindu family you like the culture of the vedas or if you are born in a christian family you like the culture of the church very great do it continue doing it you don't have to change anything just by changing paths you won't uh, uh, reach your destination you will reach once you walk whichever path it is all right Thank you very much for your patience and see you tomorrow.